Listen up. It's just in. All the gossip. 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 The rumor report. Gossip. gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The, the Breakfast, Breakfast Club. Club. All right, so the latest episode of Red Table Talk featured journalist Lisa Ling and author and sociologist Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. And what they were talking about is the animosity between black Americans and Asian Americans, something that's rarely talked about. Here is what Lisa Ling had to say. Those are individual experiences, exactly. and that can't categorize... The whole... Stereotype. The, 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 can't the, stereotype. That's not the totality. They are so diverse. I mean, there are over 20 different Asian cultures yep. living in this country with different languages, different traditions. Right. And frankly, not only do I know very little about being Thai or Laotian or Cambodian or Vietnamese, I don't even know the first thing about being Chinese because yeah. I'm not from China, I'm from America. All right, now Dr. Michael Eric Dyson was weighing in because there is a lot of animosity between both groups of people. And here's what he had to say about these being, you know, sometimes there's individual experiences and that does not uh, account for a totality of a group of people. How many black people have stolen from them mm -hmm. that their attitudes oh. have been misshapen mm -hmm. by the behavior of certain of a, black people. Of a few. And you're gonna go, wait a minute, most black people ain't ripping you off. Most black right. people, right? So I would, I would ask them, yeah. I understand your pain, but don't draw conclusions based on your limited sample size because white folk have been doing that forever. It's just, that's right. And Jim Crow is based on that. Right. Yeah. White supremacy is based on that. You ain't gotta worry about nothing but the truth from Michael Eric Dyson. Drop on the clues bombs from Michael Eric Dyson, damn it. Yes, so, you know, this is an ongoing discussion, again, because it is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. I, I think it's incredible. I mean, I think the only way that you're going to ever get on the same page with anybody is to have conversations. That's why I don't understand why people be so quick to try to silence certain conversations. Have the conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, because they'll say that black people get treated badly when they go in these Asian-owned businesses, and then... Asian people will say that black people treat them badly. But really, the truth is uh, both groups of people are oppressed and it's very divisive. And so we don't thrive that way. And by the way, the first time I ever saw any black Asian beef uh, was when Old Dog walked into the convenience store and Minister Society. Oh, my God. You remember that? Well, let's not base all mm -hmm. of our experiences based off of that. I didn't grow up <laughs> right. in the city. I didn't see what y'all saw. All right, now, Michael Che, since we're talking about uh, race and all of that, uh, he did an interview with Howard Stern, and he was talking about some of his ideas that just couldn't make it onto Saturday Night Live. The one that didn't get on the air was the idea of the Avengers accidentally k kill an unarmed black teenager. I mean, I think, I think for <laughs> obvious reasons, there's no way that's going Why? on. Why? Why not? Uh, sometimes that's something that's like racially specific. The audience right. is kind of looking at Saturday Night Live as Lorne Michaels' show. They're not looking at it as, oh, these are a, this is a black writer who is making this nuanced observation or whatever. So it's it's a little trickier, you know. On my show, I could get away with it because they know it's me. Uh, I'm one of those people who tired of taking in black trauma, but that is the sketch I would like to see because I am a huge Marvel fan, and I just would like to see how they how they did that. Right, well, yeah, how, how would maybe they conclude it'll be that? on his sketch show, That Damn Michael Che, and you can see that on HBO Max, by the way. Mm. All right, now, Jake Paul has signed a multi-fight deal with Showtime Boxing, so Lord he's working <laughs> on an opponent, so they're going to figure that out. So that means his run with Triller is over for now. We don't know how much money he's getting from his new contract or when he's going to get back in the ring, but they said that they are in, in advance talks about locking in the opponent as well as a date and location. I'm trying to get is, Jake. I want Jake Paul to fight Wax. I think that I think we can make that happen. I want Jake Paul and Wax to be Man, in the if ring. Wax loses that fight. I don't know if he can. <laughs> but, but has Wax I, been training as far as a boxer? I though? think Wax would lose. But my point is, oh my goodness, my point is that should be Why the fight. Why would you want to set Wax up like that? Don't he have his own podcast, Bully and the Beast? He'll have to change the name. Well, no, not really. It's boxing. I mean, listen, if he trains, oh, no. if he trains, because this is boxing. This isn't a street he fight. Has, street he fight. He watches Jake Paul. It's not even close. But if it's a boxing match. He's going to have to train. And but people I want might to... walk up to him while he's with you and try to punch him because he well, lost then to Jake Paul. Then they, that's just, they just stupid. They'll lose their jaw. Yeah, then but then let, me, let me ask you a question. Though. What does this do for boxing, though? Like, like, what does it do for the sport of boxing? Bring you know, a lot of two eyes brothers, to it. That YouTubers that, that are fighting Floyd, making millions. This guy, just, I'm sure, just signed a multi-million dollar deal with Showtime. What does that do for the sport of boxing? Here's the thing when it comes to Jake Paul. When Jake Paul gets in the ring with a real boxer, he's going to get washed. 
okay? <laughs> but as long as he keeps fighting, like, you know, celebrities and, you know, Wax. athletes, <laughs> you know, he'll be fine. But if they're putting him on Showtime to fight real boxes, that ain't going to last long. They put did he say on... something to Wax, or did you just make this up? I just want to see it. He I think it'll be good for it. the game. It, I mean, Wax thinks he can beat Jake Paul. Y'all don't so. think this is good for boxing? No. Nah, no, no. no. I don't. But when's the last time we? I thought you talked about wax. No, I, 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 I watch boxing on the regular. So right, no, but, I don't think it's good for boxing because there's so many great boxers that don't get this kind of like the, the Terrence Crawfords, the, the Earl Spences, right. the Sean Porters. You know what I mean? But for the casual Canelo fan, Alvarez. Well, you know, boxing like UFC overtook boxing as like the popular combat sport, right? So boxing has kind of been in the background. So this kind of brings it back to bringing an interest to boxing. Not with YouTubers boxing getting multi million dollar checks. Like Charlamagne said, there's so many boxes out there that get so busy that boxes. are nice yeah. that, All right, that well, you, you guys, have eyes that on. That is your rumor report. We can talk about it more later. And shout out to my guy uh, Edgar Belonga, too. Shout out to him as well. Now, Jake Paul Sha- Wax, we get behind it with the promo. We make this a big thing. Let's get this money, baby. <laughs> Okay, Breakfast Club promotions, <laughs> Bully and the Beast promotions, <laughs> but Brilliant you Idiots promotions, okay, to whatever Jake Paul's against, company is. But you voting against you guys, guy. we got to go. Huh? Huh? You heard me. <laughs> Next up, donkey of the day. Who you give me a donkey to? Listen. Who you giving that donkey to, Charlemagne? I don't like how you say that to me. I need the uh, board of trustees for the University of North Carolina to come to the front of the congregation. We'd like to have a word with them this morning, please. All right, we'll get into that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning. 